Hey guys, so today I want to discuss uh, range on a charge and uh, especially here in the winter time. Uh, I apologize if the sun is glaring. I happen to be driving in the direction of uh, my cameras aiming at the sun. But anyway, today <clears throat> I got up, it was 17 degrees out. It's 23 now, so I've averaged 20 degrees throughout the day. I've driven so far 119 miles. Now, I started my day on a 100% state of charge, which I never do during work, but uh, started at 100% state of charge, and uh, I've gone 119 miles. I currently have 153 miles of, of uh, range left. Uh, you can see here the graph. I'm just at the halfway mark here, 50% uh, charge. And um, so what I wanted to point out is that uh, today in the 119 miles I've driven, and again, uh, average 20 degrees out, uh, I've gone 218 watt hours per mile, which is actually extremely efficient considering I've got aftermarket 20 inch wheels and tires on it, and it's winter time. So I wanted to walk you guys through a couple of things. You can see today 119 miles, and I've used 33 kilowatt hours, and I've gone 280 watt hours per mile. And uh, there's my 153 miles of range left. I started at 100% state of charge. So that's what we're looking at. The best range I've ever gotten out of this car in a full day of driving was in the summer with the aero wheels and tires and I was really nursing it. And uh, that day I, um, I got 108, or excuse me, 168 watt hours per mile for an entire day. More often than not, I was at 180 to 190 watt hours per mile uh, without using the air conditioning in the summer with the aero wheels and tires. With the 20 inch aftermarket wheels and tires, I averaged about 225 uh, watt hours per mile, so there was quite the, quite the penalty. But in the winter, here's the thing. Today, what I did is I preheated the car and I preheated it to 76 degrees of cabin temperature. Now, normally I, I preheat it hotter. Why I didn't do it this morning is kind of a long story, but normally I'll turn it up to 81 degrees, which is the max you can turn it up to without it just heating on endless high heat. And um, I like to do that because if the cabin starts out extra hot, then over time I can get in the car with no heat at all and drive it for quite some time before the cabin cools off enough that I need to turn the heat on again. And I preheat it with it plugged in. So even though, yes, I'm using energy from the house that I have to pay for, at least it's not reducing my range. In fact, it increases my range uh, a bit. So, uh, and I did that this morning. I preheated it, but to 76 degrees. And, uh, and I, I preheat my car for a very long time, mainly because I want all of the surfaces to be warm. Uh, the, the steering wheel, it doesn't have a heated steering wheel. So I like the steering wheel to be warm, the screen to be warm. Uh, my tablet that I usually leave out in the car, I want to be warm and all that. So, uh, so I like to have it preheated for some time. So I normally turn on the preheat about a half hour to 40 minutes before I go outside. If there's snow on the car or ice in the windows, I'll turn it on an hour before I go out to give the windows a chance to clear. So then what I do is I get in the car with no heat at all and I turn the heated seat on. I have it on three bars right now, all the way as hot as I can go. So let's show that here. So you can see my seat three bars as hot as I can get it um, and um, I don't turn the heat on just the heated seat and I'm perfectly comfortable I use this car for work I do anywhere from eight to ten appointments a day so I'll get to my first appointment and um, get back out to my car say 30 minutes after the appointment and get back in the car and normally I turn the heated seat on and I turn the heat on for just about five minutes as I drive to my next stop. As soon as it feels warm in the cabin, I turn the heat off. And with the heated seat on and residual heat in the, cab, uh, the cabin itself, uh, the, the car stays very warm. And this is a, a well-sealed car. I mean, glass does get cold, there's a lot of glass, but Tesla does a pretty good job at air sealing the cabin on this car. And uh, as long as I don't leave the heat cranked all day and I just use it when I need it, use the heated seat, I will occasionally put my winter hat on. Uh, but I, I don't suffer in the car. I, I don't drive around just freezing. I turn the heat on when I need it, but I don't need it very often. I use the heated seat and um, I wear a couple of sweaters so I don't have to have a bulky jacket on. Uh, and I can, I can keep it 
at or below 280 watt hours per mile, almost no matter how cold it is. Now, if I crank the heat, if I just leave it on all day, heated seat and heated cabin, and I don't really pay attention to my range, it's more like 325 watt hours per mile through the day. So using heat permanently draws 40 or 45 more watt hours per mile of energy out of the pack. So, so I would rather not do that if I don't need to. And um, so it's, um, yeah, that's been my experience. And, uh, you know, I don't, again, I don't want to suffer in my car, so I don't sit there and drive around shivering with the heat off to get an extra 10 watt hours per mile. Uh, but I also don't leave the heat on and just be wasteful about it. My philosophy is to be as efficient and conservative as I can. So again, I'll use the heat when I need to, which is a few minutes, turn it off and the car stays warm for quite a while. I use the heated seat the rest of the time and we're all good. So that's been my experience. And um, so anyway, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe. If you wanna buy a Tesla, please use my referral code. There'll be a link in the description below. And uh, you guys have yourselves a wonderful day and uh, take it easy now. Bye-bye.